up your YouTube, search for Stupid Meadows, watch on your big screen. Or another device if you're at home. Get yourself comfy, this could take a while. What a happy scene. Something new every day for your long term memory. This is so exciting, it is nearly time for a Stupid Assembly. everyone and welcome to our Wednesday reading assembly for each other we every day we to improve we together we will every single Stukely day we focus on our Stukely motto is our Stukely curriculum is our everyday plan for in-school and remote learning is and four words that make all that magic happen. Yes, they do. Working hard and being kind is to me and most people I know the most important things in the world. OK, I've had to move out into the garage. You can probably see my breath. Um, I was getting a bit noisy inside. Started in the house, started to read the book, started to get a bit carried away, and I realized that this might be the best place for assembly today, maybe forever. Apart from the school, obviously. Anyway, it's reading assembly. I'm excited today because we've got a new book. It's only gonna last us about two weeks. So it's a great book to get us started off for 2021. But before I start the book, we've got a bit of work to do on authors, haven't we? So let's have a really quick think. OK, so in our reading assemblies, when we started last year, crikey, when we started our reading assemblies last year, we kicked off with some Charles Dickens, abridged versions. And we read David Copperfield. We read Oliver Twist. We read Christmas Carol. We actually did that one twice. We did Great Expectations. We had a great time with Charles Dickens. Then we moved on to a Jane Austen abridged book, uh, Northanger Abbey. It wasn't my favourite story, but I'm glad we gave it a go. Um, then we moved on to some very short stories by a guy called Kevin Crossley Holland. And then the last pr book we read just before The Christmas Carol again was Andy Stanton's Mr. Gum. Loved that book. Anyway. Those people are all authors. Andy Stanton, Jane Austen, Charles Dickens, Kevin Crossley Holland, Julia Donaldson's another one. Quick challenge for you all in your house or in your classroom. I'd like to pause this video in a moment and write down as many authors as you can. And here's a challenge. Can you think of an author that nobody else in the same room as you will think of or can you think of an author that nobody in the room or the house next to you will think of? Basically, think of as many authors as you can. Pause the video, give yourself 60 seconds, 120 seconds, something like that. Go! The most important. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, no, no. That's at the end, Mr. Jones. It's at the end. We're going to do the book and then the shout outs and that kind of cheer boost on our silence. Then 60 seconds. OK, so, uh, Mr. Jones, great guy, but come on, Mr. Jones, we've got to get this right. New year. Come on. Right now. I've got a book in my hands. It's called The Finger Eater by Dick King Smith. Now, Dick King Smith is a very famous author. Millions of children, millions of adults have heard of him. He's actually one of our houses, one of our Stukely houses. We've got Michael Morpurgo House, the Blue House. He's one. Of, he's an author. We've got uh, Rowling, uh, J.K. Rowling House, the Red House. She's an author. We've got um, Roald Dahl, Yellow House. He's an author. And then we've got Dick King Smith, the Green House. So, 
We are going to read, start to read The Finger Eater by Dick King Smith. Okay, it's a short book. We'll finish it in a couple of weeks. Um, if you're in foundation or in year six, I promise you, if you haven't read it before, you're going to really enjoy it, no matter what age you are. If you have read it, enjoy somebody else reading it to you. Here we go. I'm not going to read you the blurb. Normally, you'd read it to work out if you were going to like the book or not. I'm not going to read it to you. All a surprise. I will give you the front cover. And just for your information, it's on AR level 4.9. Okay. Chapter one. Long, long ago, in the cold lands of the north, there lived a most unusual troll. Like all of the other hill folk, they were called that because they usually made their homes in the holes in the hills. Like all the hill folk, he was humpbacked and bow-legged with a frog face and bat ears and razor sharp teeth. But he grew up, but like other trolls, not very tall, with an extremely bad habit. A habit is something that you do often. You probably can't help it. And a habit is usually not a good thing. Usually not. He grew up with an extremely bad habit. He liked to eat fingers. Ulf, for that was his name, always went about eating fingers in exactly the same way. Whenever he spotted somebody from the top of the hill, and they were walking at the bottom of the hill, he would come up to them, smiling broadly and happily, and he would hold out his hand and say politely, How do you do? And there's a picture of Ulf meeting a visitor, somebody walking in the hills and saying, how do you do? Now, trolls are usually rude and extremely grumpy and they don't care about anybody. So any person that heard Ulf saying, how do you do? would be really surprised and feel happy that they'd finally met a pleasant troll. And the other person would usually hold out their hand to shake Ulf's hand. Then Ulf would take the hand and quick as a flash, <laughs> bite off a finger and run away as fast as his bow legs would carry him, chewing like mad <laughs> and grinning all over his frog face. Strangers visiting those parts were amazed to see how many men, women and children were missing a finger on their right hands, especially the children, because their fingers were more tender and softer and Ulf loved soft and tender fingers. Nobody was ever missing more than one finger because even small children would never try and shake Ulf's hand a second time after they'd already lost a finger to him before. If they had lost a finger, they would put their hands deep into their pockets, never to show Ulf again. It was usually the index finger that Ulf would nip off because it was the easiest one to get to. Because of this, so many children grew up pointing at things with their middle finger and holding a pencil between their middle finger and their third finger. 
So if you've lost that finger, you can't hold a pencil at all easily. But sometimes Ulf went for the little finger for some reason, but he never went for the thumb. He did not seem to fancy the thumb. Strangely, the people of the land put up with Ulf. They were tolerant of him. They didn't mind him. And they seemed to put up with his bad habit for years and years and years. If we can't stop him, we'll just have to put up with him, they said. What can't be cured must be endured, they would say. I love that phrase. I've never heard it before. What can't be cured means what we can't change must be endured, which means we've just got to get on with it. I love that. I love that phrase. What can't be cured must be endured, they would say. And since they thought it was no use crying over their missing fingers, they didn't waste any tears over it. But they got on their luck with their lives with only seven fingers. Chapter two. Who knows how long Ulf would have gotten away with ha, biting off fingers? How long would he have continued his wicked ways? Except for a little girl called Gudrun. So we've had Ulf, the finger eater, and now we're meeting a little girl called Gudrun. And actually, a bit of a sneaky look on the back cover, there's a colour picture of Gudrun. Gudrun was the only child of a reindeer farmer. She had golden hair which she wore in a long plait and her eyes were the colour of cornflowers. Indeed she was as pretty as a picture looking as though reindeer butter would not melt in her mouth. She was also a sensible child who paid attention to what her parents told her. One evening, as they all sat outside around the tent and near the fire, Gudrun's mother said to her, Remember, you must never shake hands with a troll. Good, good message, Gudrun's mother. Gudrun's mother stirred the cooking pot that was suspended, that means hanging, above the flames. The hand that held the ladle to stir had no little finger. With his right hand, where the index finger was missing, Gudrun's father picked up a stick to put on the fire. So both Gudrun's mother and father have both lost a finger and we know why. No matter how politely the troll calls out, how do you do? Never offer him your hand, Gudrun, said her father. What, what should I do then? She said. Put your hands in your pockets and run, said Gudrun's mother. said Gudrun. Why didn't either of you do that when you saw the troll? When we were both children, said her father, we didn't know about the finger eater. We were amongst the first in this district, said her mother, to lose a finger. Nobody else had lost one. But now Everybody knows, Gudrun. Everybody knows. Well, well, why don't all mothers and fathers warn their children then, said Gudrun. They do, said her mother. But sometimes the children don't listen or they just forget, Gudrun. Please don't forget. Please remember, dear girl. Gudrun thought deeply about this message. And then one day she was out on the hills helping her father herd the reindeer as they grazed their way across 
the slopes. It's all very well, she thought, to tell children not to get their fingers eaten. But someone should tell that troll not to eat them. Eating people's fingers is wrong. Now you've probably worked out that Gudrun was a very sensible little girl. And not only was she sensible and pretty, but she was also a very resolute child. That means she doesn't give up. She's very strong minded, very confident. She decided that she would stop the finger eater. But how? Father, she said as she sat milking one of the reindeer. How big is a troll? And this is a great picture of her there milking, looking over her shoulder and asking her father, who's got the greatest moustache you've ever seen, asking her father how big a troll is. Oh, no taller than you, Gudrun. I think that voice has changed every time. No taller than you, Gudrun, her father said. But much, much stronger. Ha! Have you ever met one, father? said Gudrun. Her father did not need to answer. He held up his right hand. Oh yes, said Gudrun. Have you met one since you lost your finger? No, said her father. But I have quite often seen the hill folk just for a moment. Then they scuttle down their holes and all of those trolls are shy of people except Ulf, the finger eater. And you've never seen him again, said Gudrun. No, and nor will you, Gudrun. You will not see him, I hope. But not long after that chat with her father, Gudrun did meet Ulf, the finger eater. Right, we're going to finish there. We've read a couple of chapters. We're on chapter three and we'll finish the book next week. If you've read this book before, please don't spoil it. Don't tell anybody how the plot moves on. Don't tell people how the story moves on and finishes. We'll enjoy that next week and see what happens. Right, before shout outs and miss time, Mr. Jones, we are going to enjoy a cheer, a boo, a song or a silence. Now, it's the first one of 2021. I would love it if this starts off with a really confident, positive start. Check this out. Will they get a cheer or will they get a boo? With either one there must not be violence. They may well get a song but it will not last that long. We really hope they do not get silence. Hello everybody and welcome to the Cheer Boo Song or Silent Studio. This is our first attempt in 2021. Now, the year 2020, the year 2020, was a tough one. I think we all agree there were lots and lots of challenges last year. Now, for Mrs. Stevens, it was an even worse year because she came out of the curtain and she got silence and she's never ever forgotten it. So guess what we're going to do today? We're going to start off the year positively. I've got Mrs. Stevens back behind the curtain and we are going to try and improve on her silence. Now what do you think she's going to get? Is she going to get a cheer, a boo, a song or silence? What do you think? Oh, I'm, I'm rooting for you Mrs. Stevens. Right, first one of the year, I'm pumped. Right, out you come, Mrs. Stevens! <laughs> Enough. So. Okay. 
I don't think this has happened before. Mrs. Cooper's the only person that's had a repeat visit and it didn't go well for her. A silence and a boo. I'm not sure we can try this again. Let's see how the audience reacted to that double disappointment. Okay, I, I don't really know what to say, but this is how the game works. This is how cheer, boo, song or silence works. It could be any of the four. I'll see you next time for more cheer, boo, song or silence. Will they get a cheer or will they get a boo? With either one there must not be violence. They may well get a song, but it will not last that long. We really hope they do not get silenced. Do you know what? Some you win, some you lose. And I think we all know that a cheer and a song are winners, a boo and a silence are losers. And Mrs. Stevens has got a couple of losers there. A silence last year, which she's never ever forgotten about, and now a boo. Well, Third time lucky maybe next year, Mrs. Stevens. Okay, I wonder who will be next week. Now, a few shout outs before we finish off. I'm excited about today's shout outs. Uh, first of all, let's do birthdays. Yes. Happy birthday today to Daisy in foundation stage. Happy birthday, Daisy. Conrad in year two. Big day for Conrad. Think he's in school? And Daisy as well, I think. Uh, and happy birthday, Bailey in year two. Happy birthday, let me just do a quick check. Yeah, happy birthday to the three of you. I hope you make the most of whatever you can do uh, with family, maybe catch up with friends on the phone or might see a couple of them in school from a distance. Um, enjoy your day. This is not a birthday you're gonna forget soon. Um, okay. Hang on a sec. This is a reading assembly, right? Oh, let's have a quick reminder about Accelerated Reader. If you're reading Accelerated Reader books at home, that's mainly year twos up to year six, some year ones are, you should be taking quizzes. You should be taking quizzes every time you finish an AR book. Um, I've put it in an easier place on the website, the quiz link. So this page, this is the main website page. Have a little look. Okay, if you click on this part here, which says plans for 2020, 2021. In fact, let me make it a bit easier. This bit here, there, you see plans just there? Yes, click on that bit and then uh, this appears. There's the link. Easier to find it in the other place. Most of you have probably got it saved anyway, but there's no excuse. Read the book, do the quiz, and next week I'm gonna be checking every single Monday how many people are taking quizzes, just like I did in school at the end of last year. Okay, uh, also, Blue Spot winners, well done. Big shout out to you all again. You all get a five from the Oakleaf Bookshop. Hang on a cheeky sec though. Today's shout out is to anybody who's got a purple triangle in their book. Have a good look everyone. Have you got a purple triangle in your book? If you've got a purple triangle somewhere, take a photo, get somebody to take a photo of you with it and email it to me. I need it to be emailed. Please don't tweet it because everybody will see where it is. Email me, head at stukeleymeadows.cams.sch.uk. Anybody, any child in school who's got a purple triangle in their book, if I see the photo of it, you will all get a slightly different prize. Yes. You will all get the chance, listen carefully here, you will all get the chance. When we're back in school, when we're back in school, 
you will all get the chance the first time ever you'll be the first children ever to eat off a great plate now i can't tell you any more than that i've had this idea called the great plate i wanted to start it this week but we need everyone back in school so any of you that got a purple triangle, send your emails to me, your pictures to me, and when we're all back in school together, you'll be the first ever group of children at Stukeley Meadows to eat from the great plate. Oh, it's gonna be brilliant. You'll see what, you'll have to wait for it, but trust me, it'll be worth it. Okay. Um, it's reading assembly, yeah? Okay, interesting. I'll tell you why it's interesting, because we've got some millionaires. Yes, we have. Well done to, oh, I've lost my post-it. <gasps> it's over here, Mr. Jones has got it. <laughs> Millionaires, uh, year five, Mark, Eloise, Josh E and Munaza. You've all hit that million. Well done, keep reading, you're doing a great job. Also, year four, Emma. 1,023,308 words. She's just got there. Super work, Emma. Super, super reading. Well done to all of our millionaires. There'll be prizes for you and a big celebration when we're back in school. Okay. Um, I think that's it for shout outs. Well done to everybody that's working hard and being kind. Now, Mr. Jones, hit us with a 60 seconds. The most important. 60 seconds are coming up now The most important 60 seconds are coming up now Whoa. What are those two dates again? The most important dates? Oh, I'll tell you that Monday the 18th and Tuesday the 19th of January It's next week Next week Monday the 18th, Tuesday the 19th. They are the days that every single person can pick up their brand new workbooks. These workbooks are great. I've seen the year one workbook. It is great. I haven't seen the others, but they're gonna be great. They're all gonna be ready Monday the 18th, Tuesday the 19th of January. We need as many families as possible to come and pick them up safely from school. We'll tell you what times and we'll tell you how it's gonna work. But for now, families, we need you to try and get the workbooks on a Monday or the Tuesday, and it will be between nine and three o'clock, and there'll be certain times to pick it up. But keep those days in mind ready for that. Also, this is incredibly important, families, if you are remote learning, you need to email the class teacher once a day with your child's learning. It's not just about checking the work, it's about checking that you're in, checking that you're there checking that the children are there. I know it sounds silly, but it's part of our plan to keep everybody together. So please remember at some point in the afternoon, even it's the evening, ping us an email, let us know. If we don't hear from you for a number of days, we're gonna have to come knocking on the door because it's part of our job to keep us all safe and well. So thank you for keeping in touch. Um, thank you those of you that are doing that. See you tomorrow, Music Assembly.